Welcome to the show. Good evening. This is Jim Lettuce. This is the temporary space show where technology and entertainment collide. It's like 10 p.m. I know it's about seven days into April, but this is technically the March edition of the temporary space show. So deal with it. I'm drinking an iced tea, a Long Island iced tea. I have to work at like 6 a.m. It's 11 p.m. Let's do this. So, I've made a decision. I believe the vlog is superfluous. And I'm just going to do the vlog content for the first 5-10 minutes of this podcast. I've been stressing out, thinking like, how am I going to do the vlog? i got to get footage for the vlog. And I thought, why don't I just put it in the podcast? I can see myself doing the podcast like 10 years from now. So we're just going to do the podcast. Furthermore, I'm still experimenting constantly. This is always an experiment and I've reset my settings on GarageBand. I changed my mic input. I'm trying to do, I'm trying to speak a bit closer to the mic. So... We'll see if this works. Anyways, I digress. Without further ado, let me go over this uh, vlog content, which is basically an update on me and the business. So, first of all, check out the new movie, the short film Blazer Gibson. It is available on our website, TemporarySpaceStudios.com Please check it out. I put a lot of work into it. I put a lot of money into it. And uh, it would be really cool if you watched that. Anyways, housekeeping out of the way. You know, buy our merchandise. LettuceWearClothing.com All that jazz. Anyways, so this month I had a colonoscopy slash endoscopy and I was really stressed out about it I was freaking out because I thought oh no the anesthesia is going to mess me up because honestly I haven't had any kind of anesthesia since I was like a child but it was cool it wasn't that bad I got through it Uh, the prognosis is that I'm fine no uh, polyps or anything like that. The main reason I did it was because my dad, he had a bunch of polyps when he was my age. And I don't like to go into my age, but let's just say it was coming up on that time for me to get a colonoscopy. And my doctor was like, yo, you should get both. You should get the booty and the throat. And I was like, okay, let's do it. My health insurance covered it. Barely. So let's talk about that. One of the things I want to touch on is my medical bills. So I'm okay. Nothing wrong with me. I went through all these trials and tribulations. And I don't want to go into detail, but I was worried. And according to all the doctors and the medical community, I'm fine. There's nothing wrong with me. But I've learned that my insurance is not nearly as good as I thought. It's good. I'm not going to get rid of it. But let's just say I got a few bills I have to pay. And it's stressing me out just a tiny bit. Like 1%. And I was talking to my mom and she was like, yeah. Most older people, they get two insurance companies. They don't have just one. They have your main insurance, right? And then they have a secondary insurance company that covers the rest. I had no idea this was a thing. And I'm learning about it. And I think I'm going to meet with some kind of uh, insurance guy. 
So we'll see how that goes. I'm very weary of making any new monthly payments. I actually just went through this whole uh, reorganization of my budget, this renaissance, if you will, because I was really stressed out about how much they were going to charge me for this colonoscopy slash endoscopy because I actually had, a, and it wasn't a procedure, but I had all this stuff looked at, my heart checked out, and I'm okay. They said there's nothing wrong with me, but the people called me and they were like, yeah, you owe $900. And I was like, what the, what do you mean? $900 for what? They're like, oh, this and that. And I said, oh, I remember that. I didn't know it was going to cost me $900 five months later. You know, like I was ready to deal with bills, but when they hit you with a bill six months later, that's a little bit stressful. I'm not going to lie, but it's cool. I'm dealing with it. Luckily, I have a job that pays decent. And I'm taking care of these bills, but I just wanted to talk about how I'm a little bit butthurt that I have these bills and I have to deal with them. I thought the whole point of health insurance was that you don't have a lot of bills. I mean, I called the insurance people and they were like, yeah, here's what it really would have cost. And I was like, damn. Thank you, because it was way more than what I paid, but, you know, it doesn't change the fact that I'm paying a bunch of bills right now, so my new goal is to stay the hell away from the doctor, that's my goal, is just stay away, alright, I'm looking at garage man and it has bars and beats where's the doesn't it show me the time did I click some kind of a I don't know what I did whatever it looks like it's working though it's recording so let's not look the gift horse in the mouth all right I'm covering my vlog topics right now I covered the bills and my procedure. It was okay. I was so stressed out about the anesthesia, but it was fine. I woke up, they gave me some juice, and it was fine. Uh, what else? Let's talk about the St. Patrick's Day Parade. I don't want to tell you exactly where I live, but let's just say I live in a place where we have a St. Patrick's Day Parade, there's some kind of marathon, and people basically go to this street, and we all get drunk, and the cops kind of look the other way, and it's like okay to get drunk for that day, for like a few hours, it's not, it's more than a few, it's like 10 a.m. to like 3 p.m. or something like that, they close off the street, and so I used to live like right near the street and every year I would go to this parade and get drunk and it was a lot of fun, but I'm a bit older and I haven't been to this parade in a few years and I had a good time. Uh, I met up with some new friends, shout out to them. I won't drop any names, but it was a good time. It was really exciting. I actually felt like I was in my 20s again. Because when you get older, it's just, you know, going to parties and stuff like that. It, there's just not that many. Or rather, there are, but you have to go look for them. And it's like a quest. Like, you have to actively search it out. And I'm too lazy for that. So it was nice to party. The parade itself was meh. It's really not known for being like a big time parade. But it was cool. I had a good time. I am definitely going to go next year. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. Uh, 
what else? Uh, let's talk about OBS. So I've been live streaming with OBS. Shout out to OBS. Open Broadcaster. <laughs> Wait a minute. What does that stand for? Hold on. What does OBS stand for? Open Broadcaster Software. It's basically free software. We are not sponsored by OBS, but it's a pretty legitimate streaming slash recording software. So if you're looking for that, I highly recommend to check it out. But there's an issue. So when I, what am I doing? When I live stream with it, there's this weird thing where it captures from my Elgato, right? It goes from the PS5 into my Mac Mini, and it makes the picture darker. I don't know why. I don't know if it's an Elgato thing, if it's an OBS thing, if it's a PS5 thing. As far as I can tell, it's actually a OBS thing. Open Broadcaster does some kind of weird... It makes things darker, and I looked on all these tutorials on YouTube. You can Google it. Basically, you'll find that a lot of them tell you to change the color range from limited, from wide to limited, but I already had it on limited. So, through experimentation, i.e., looking for different solutions on YouTube, because everybody learns things on YouTube, am I right? I learned that you can just put a filter on your Elgato video feed, essentially. So I put a brightness filter, I put a little, a, a bit of contrast in there, and it looks a lot better when I check the box and turn it on and off, I realize how much of a difference it makes. Because for a while, I thought it was my monitor that just looked too dark. But I noticed when my talking lettuce head moves, there's no issue. It does not look too dark. It's only the Elgato feed. So I think it has something to do with the Elgato interface, but also OBS settings. I look forward to troubleshooting these issues when I buy a new Elgato, they've released a new Elgato called the Elgato 4KX or some kind of BS like that. I don't remember what it's called, but if you want to support us, please check out our website, watch our short film, buy some shirts on lettucewearclothing.com. That will actually help me buy the new Elgato faster. I mean, I'll buy it sooner or later. I have a job. I have like a day job. So I'm not really reliant on this programming to make my money specifically, but it helps. But basically, once I get that, when we start broadcasting in 4K HDR, it should be legit. Hopefully, we can bypass this OBS darkness issue, but you know, we'll see. I can always apply the filter to the footage again. It's basically like a capture filter. I used to do this on YouTube a lot because YouTube, I think YouTube specifically, but also the MP4 codec, it just looks dark. It looks like crap. And we're still using it. And, you know, H.264 is a dream. But we'll see how it goes, you know. All right, let me put a star by that bad boy. All right, we're still covering the quote-unquote vlog content because I'm so over making a vlog. I think once I get a Quest 3... And I can make vlogs in VR chat. Maybe we'll see if I can make more vlogs. I don't know. 
I've been sitting here for the last month or two thinking how superfluous the vlog actually is. I can see potential with the podcast as far as entertainment and monetization. As far as the vlog goes, it seems like a pain in the ass. I have to like record it and then I have to get some kind of video game footage because I'm not recording me. Because, again, I don't want to put my face on stuff anymore. So, I don't know. Basically, I've decided the vlog is pointless. And I'm just going to do the vlog content on the podcast. So, there you go. So, let's talk about Warrior Season 3. This is a hot new show I've been watching on Netflix, and it's great. I love it, and it's a really cool martial arts TV show. There is not enough TV shows that promote martial arts. It's not like I'm some kind of big martial arts guy, per se, but there's a void in the market. There's just not that many martial arts shows, and... When I was a kid, there was a lot more. Anyways, it's a good show. It was originally a Max show, formerly HBO Max. And they have since put the show on Netflix. And according to the street, you know, the streets say that a season four was commissioned by Netflix. So Max had this as an original show on their platform and newsflash Netflix and maybe Disney plus they seem to be the only companies that are making legitimate income from their streaming platforms even though streaming has been a thing for like 10 years all of these companies are still working out the kinks trying to figure out the business model and Netflix is winning so hard to the point where HBO and other platforms are just putting their content on Netflix. Netflix is the new TV. Very exciting. Warrior is, like I said, it was originally HBO Max. They made three seasons, sold it to Netflix, or rather licensed it to Netflix, and then They put it on Netflix. It's three seasons. Netflix wants a fourth. Uh, I just want to talk about the show. How season three was pretty cool. It's really cool to see a show start out. I mean, it was an HBO Max show. So they had pretty good budget in the first place. And it's very HBO. There's a lot of nudity. I'm a fan. But you can tell a lot of the actors in the new season are like, oh, you mean I'm a big deal and I don't have to do nudity? Cool. So there's less uh, tits and ass. I gotta be honest. I'm sad because I appreciate that kind of stuff because I'm an artist. I'm a cultured person, okay? But at the end of the day, it's still good. There's a lot of martial arts. The main character is like a Bruce Lee callback. This whole show was originally a script idea that Bruce Lee had before he died. So the main character is always doing like Bruce Lee stuff. Even though some of the other characters, there's two other ones specifically, and they channel Bruce Lee. However, the main character for sure definitely channels Bruce Lee like hardcore especially in season 3 during the finale he does that like nose wipe thing where Bruce Lee like he puts his arms up like he's gonna fight but then he wipes his nose with his thumb and I was cheering out loud I really like this show I'm super hyped for season 4 so I'm here to report Season 3 is the shit. Please go check it out. It's really good.
So exciting stuff. I think I covered all of that. Now let's do, I want to talk about this movie that's been on Netflix for a while. It came out a few years ago. Let's look it up. What, how long? It is called Shot Caller with, what's his name? Nikolai Kostiwaldu, which if you don't know who that is, that's the guy from Game of Thrones. The guy, Jamie Lannister, who's like banging his sister. Turns out he's actually a really good actor. And so the plot of the movie is he's this stockbroker, yuppie type dude. And he's out having dinner with his wife and his friend and her and his wife. And he's drinking a bit too much. And they're driving home. And he hits another guy in the car. Like drunk driving. And his best friend gets killed in the accident. So he actually goes to prison. As a. It's like manslaughter. I think is the charge. And it shows. It's kind of like Breaking Bad. But super serious. Where this white collar. Yuppie white guy just you know went to an Ivy League school regular stockbroker job it shows how he slowly becomes institutionalized and he has to go to prison and deal with prison trials and tribulations he's got to like stick heroin up his butt and like transport drugs and he has to fight and kill in a gang war and it's pretty hardcore and like I said it's like Breaking Bad but more serious and it shows this journey of how this guy becomes hardened and he turns into a badass and his wife kind of loses faith in him and he meets this like criminal overlord who's in prison who kind of runs everything from the prison and it's really good. Came out 2017. I have been trying to watch this for a while. It was on Netflix a few years ago. And then we almost reviewed it on our What's New to Netflix podcast. Shout out to Miles. Link is in the description. It's a Netflix podcast we do. But we were going to review it, but then we didn't. And then the movie got taken off Netflix at one point, and it just came back on. Let me see if it's still uh, on there. Hold on. I forgot to uh, look. Shot caller. All right. As of now, which is March, sorry, April 7th, 11 p.m., shot caller is still there, so it could disappear On the 12th, I don't think so. But it's really good. If you like the guy who plays Jamie Lannister, he's actually in this other movie called... uh, Let me pull it up. It's called Headhunters. What now? I think it's two words. It's a movie from 2011, and it's... It's about this uh, Nikolai Walder, what's his name? Jamie Lannister. He's actually a supporting role in this. He's the villain. But it's sh- the movie is about this guy who is a recruiter for a big corporate job. He's kind of like the American Psycho type of dude, except he's like short and not super good looking. I'm not going to say he's ugly because... He's Nordic, so he's actually pretty good looking in terms of American standards. But he he's like this corporate recruiter for this big job. Right. But at the same time, he's an art thief and he recruit. What he does is he like recruits people. And while he has them at the office for an interview, He sneaks into their house and he robs their art. So he's like an art thief, Ocean's Eleven style, but also 
a corporate recruiter and he has this super hot girlfriend right and he's trying to keep her and she ends up cheating on him with the Jamie Lannister guy who's like a, a guy who shows up and he's recruiting him trying to give him a job and so like while or spoiler alert right while he's robbing the Jamie Lannister guy he sees like some kid and their parents or something playing in the garden or some shit and he's like oh I miss my girlfriend because his girlfriend the whole time like exposition she's like trying to get him to have a baby and all this stuff so he gets sentimental and he tries to call her right but he's at the apartment of this Jamie Lannister type dude while he's calling her he hears the phone ring in the bedroom of this guy and he realizes oh my wife is cheating on me with this douchebag Jamie Lannister guy in the movie right and he flips out tries to screw him over but it turns out the Jamie Lannister character in this movie, Headhunters, is like this hardcore mercenary. And it's a good movie. There's a chase. There's drama. There's machine guns. If you're into crime dramas and just like organized crime, like Heat and Ocean's Eleven type stuff, you'd really dig this movie. Anyways, what I'm getting at is... This actor, uh, I forgot his name already. It is Nikolai Kostuwaldau. He's really good. He's in Game of Thrones. Obviously, even though Game of Thrones is like 10 years old at this moment. So it's kind of crazy how we still talk about Game of Thrones. But it's actually like a decade old and... There's a new show, House of the Dragon, which is, well, season one was pretty cool. We'll see if season two is good. I'm still on the fence about renewing my Max subscription just so I can watch it. Because I recently canceled Max and uh, Amazon Prime. So, you know, we'll see. Anyways, what's our time here? We're like 30 minutes in, I think. I don't know how to make it. How do you make it time instead of, it says bars 838. I don't know how to change that, but it's cool. It's recording. The levels are working. So let's move on to the actual vlog part. Let me pull up my notes. Not the vlog, sorry, the podcast. What is it, April? I have March vlog, but I swear I had... You know what, we're freeballing it. This is the March podcast, the temporary space show. We're just going to pull up all my tabs here. I have like a million tabs in my iPhone. Oh, excuse me. I'm drinking a long iced tea. So, a, a sorry, Long Island iced tea. So, bear with me here. Let's just go through these tabs. I have like 30 of them, okay? It's slowing down my iPhone. So, deal with it. Did I really not make a podcast? Hold on. I'm searching my notes right now. No, I didn't. I have a February vlog. All right. Like I said, I'm over the whole vlog thing and I'm just going to do the podcast every month. Hopefully this time I can get one done before May. I can do the April episode while April is still here, but it is what it is. So we're going to work through these tabs here. SpaceX Starship re-enters atmosphere for the first time. I'm just a big fan of SpaceX. They're still launching satellites 
They are working on their starship, which is like the brand new fancy spaceship. It's supposed to take us to Mars. We'll see. I've said this before, but I really hope to see them put a man on Mars. You know, I wasn't even around when they put a man on the moon, but you read articles about it. You watch news reports. It was a big deal, and I hope that I can live long enough to see them put a man on Mars. We'll see. Who knows, but Elon Musk is doing it. So it says this was a major leap for NASA's Artemis program. Feature technology is critical for future manned missions on the moon. So we're trying to go back to the moon. Russia, Japan, and India are putting rovers on Mars slash the moon. So we really need to step our game up so that we can not lose the competition, if you will. So let's see here. It says uh, it did tests. Here's a video here. I really Turn need. Atmosphere. Ah. This is where. It... I need to make a uh, like a video version of this podcast. Atmosphere we'll do it eventually. One day you'll be able to see the videos I'm watching. I'm watching the video and it looks it looks fake. I'm not going to lie. It looks like some CG from some kind of a like a video game. Like I'm looking at it right now and this looks so fake. It's got to be fake. I'm on a web page for Axios. So maybe they just made something up. I don't know. It looks fake. It looks like video game footage. So put your tinfoil hats on. Maybe it's all bullshit. We don't know. It's not like I'm going to go to the moon and check. But I would like to believe... Since then, I think they've launched the Starship a few more. The Starship is the big one, the big silver one that Elon wants to send to Mars. So we'll see. Uh, They were doing a lot of test flights in 2023. One of them exploded. I remember that. It blew up on the launch pad. And everybody was like, oh my god, oh no. And Elon Musk was like, yeah, this is why we test it. Chill out. And it makes me want to talk about Neuralink. If you don't know what Neuralink is, it is Elon Musk's brain computer chip. Basically, they put a chip uh, in your brain and it connects to your brain. And it actually works. Uh, We're going to talk about it later, but it reminds me of that. People freak out about all the testing they did, animal testing, and I feel bad for these monkeys, right? But this is how you make scientific progress. The whole reason we test on animals is because it's not a human, right? So anyways, we've covered... This Tesla, we're going to talk about Tesla before, later. There's some photos. See, this is why I want a visual aid for the podcast. There's some really dope-ass photos of the Starship. And now that I'm zooming in, it looks super fake. This could all be a conspiracy. Uh, I want to believe it's not. But listen, I'm no Photoshop expert, but zooming into this rocket photo, it looks like it's from a video game. Because when you zoom in, there's usually not that much detail in a real life photo. Uh, But you know, 
whatever. I'm not in charge. Let's move on. So Apple acquired an AI startup and apparently the AI does, it oversees manufacturing components. So a lot of people say that Apple is not a technology company. They are a supply chain company. And you could argue that Apple really has their supply chain on point. When you order something, comes in fast. I'm pretty sure they make a lot of stuff in China, but either way, they have a stranglehold on supply chain. So it's very exciting that they're going to use AI to potentially uh, make it more efficient, I guess. Um, Bloomberg talked about this. I'm trying to read the article as I talk. Apple added this to its acquisition list with Canada-based Darwin AI, which specializes in vision-based tech to observe components during manufacturing and, here you go, improve efficiency. So once again, all of our jobs are being taken away by robots, slowly but surely. Okay, I don't want to play the video. I have a YouTube video here. Maybe I will link it to the description, or maybe just Google it. It's on BBC News. It's called Open AI and Figure AI Develop Humanoid Robots. So you've heard of ChatGPT, right? So that company is actually making a humanoid robot. So let's, well, let me pull this up. Let's talk about all the companies making a human robot. Sorry, humanoid robot. So the big one is Boston Dynamics. Those are the robots that dance and do parkour. Tesla, it was a big deal when Elon Musk announced that we're making a Android AI. And that was a big deal. This was what, like a year ago? There's some other ones, notably PAL Robotics. I've heard of that. Um... Agility Robotics, I think I've heard of them. The competition is getting fierce and it's very exciting to see that OpenAI, you know, Sam, no, not Sam Bankman Freed. Who's the, let me look it up. Who is the uh, OpenAI, you know, what's his name? Sam Altman. I wanted to say Sam Bankman Freed, but it is Sam Altman. He has been on the board. He was the CEO. He got ousted as the CEO, but now he's back as the CEO. He's probably going to be on the board of, uh, what do they call it? You know, there's like the CEO and then there's the board of directors, which is basically a bunch of rich people that, you know, like the Illuminati, they decide what they want and the CEO kind of has to do what they say. Not necessarily. The CEO is also beholden to the shareholders. But Sam Altman was fired at one point, but then he was reinstated like a few months ago. Anyways, this company, the ChatGPT company, they are making an AI humanoid robot think I robot they're all taking over hopefully we can find a way to get them to take over our jobs but you know we'll see uh, very exciting I don't know any details about the robot itself but that they are developing one I don't really want to go into watching the video Let's just move on. Uh, we're going to talk about some gaming news because that falls under technology and entertainment. PS5 Pro leak. There's so, all right, so we have right now we're in the, what is it, like sixth 
console generation. We have a new generation coming up, per se. Technically, we are halfway through this generation. I know it's hard to wrap your head around it, but the PS5 came out like four years ago. There is a, there's been a leak for Xbox. They're going to have a new console that's all digital. But there has been a leak for the PS5 Pro. I kind of want to get it. Again, if you want to support us, help me buy that. Buy a shirt, check out our website. Link's in the description. But apparently the new PS5 is going to have some kind of... It says PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution. So we're looking at a up upscale DLSS AI driven technology that will basically make it a higher resolution. I'm hoping it makes everything in 8K. That would be the shit. But, you know, we'll see how it goes. This is just a leak. But there's some kind of proprietary Sony upscaling technology a la DLSS with NVIDIA and apparently it's going to have a fast SSD the word on the street is that the PS5 Pro is going to come with a terabyte of hard drive which is awesome because I had to install an SSD on my PS5 and honestly it wasn't that hard First world problems, right? But at the end of the day, if the next PS5 I can buy is already full of hard drive space, I'm willing to pay extra for that. We'll just put it that way, right? It says it's going to have an AMD CPU, RDNA, RAM, I guess. Uh... Either way, looks cool. I'm excited. The next topic is Kung Fu Panda 4. I didn't even know they were making these still. There's definitely been a few spinoff TV shows. There was three before now. And, you know, say what you want about Jack Black being a sellout, but he, he made this franchise. Kung Fu Panda is arguably one of the better CG only things in a while. Uh, I heard it's okay. It kind of sucks. However, this movie was number one for like two weeks in a row. It beat out Dune, which is very crazy. Uh, Me and Miles watched Dune. Check out the Netflix podcast to listen to the commentary we did for that. Link is in the description, but I just wanted to touch on Kung Fu Panda and talk about how Jack Black has unlimited marketability and how even though, here we go, it says uh, 1.9 billion since Panda, Kung Fu Panda started. I'm a big fan of the first one. But this is crazy. It's doing so well. So good for Jack Black. We'll see if uh, part four has legs. But I think it's cool. I think it's like, it's almost like Shrek. Like that level of novelty and quality. So, you know. Check out Kung Fu Panda 4. Again, We are not sponsored by Kung Fu Panda. Oh, here we go. I can change it to time. We're at 44 minutes. Not bad. Not bad. Let's see. I want to... Let's move on to the next topic. Walmart is selling the Apple computer for the first time. I did not know that. This is news to me. Apple has always been very closed off. Very boutique very like like Gucci or Neiman Marcus where you, or Tiffany's where you have to make an appointment like very exclusive upscale but in the past 10 years Apple has slowly turned into a big PC 
competitor. And it's nice to see that now you can buy one at Walmart. They're really going for that lowest denominator. I don't mean it as like an insult, but they are trying to garner towards the average person or slightly below average. And it's working. Apparently, they're making tons of money even though their stock is actually low. I know this because I'm an investor. I have Apple stock. I have like one share. But I focus on it. I research it every week or so. And it's their stock is down. But as far as like historically in the last 20 years, their stock is so high. It's crazy. And again, I'm not a financial advisor. Past performance does not indicate future performance but they're doing well I'll say that so we'll see how that goes I kind of want to buy one I like my Mac mini I really wish I had gotten a Mac uh, Pro alright what else uh, PlayStation Pro we talked about it I forgot I wanted to talk about the specific uh, specs it's apparently supposed to be 45 performance uplift uh, more ray tracing blah 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 45 is pretty high not gonna lie speaking of high let's talk about hell divers uh, this game is a phenomenon it's blown up in the last what four months it's basically starship troopers the game it's got that satire of fascism on point, but it's also a really fun co-op third-person shooter to play with your friends online. As of now, as of recording, it is exclusive to PS5. However, there are rumblings in the industry, and it's supposed to come out on Xbox, and then that means, you know... Five years from now, they'll put it on the Switch 1. <laughs> I like the idea of Switch. I want to get one, but it just seems like it sucks so much. Anyways, Helldivers 2 is a big hit. I really want to play it. I have yet to buy it, but I'm definitely going to buy it. And the CEO is really good at marketing DLC, so... Instead of just putting a bunch of stuff on social media like, here's the new DLC bundle and all that bullshit. What they did was the CEO, he will tweet stuff as if he is the government in that game. So, there's been these uh, sightings of blue lights from the sky like lasers. And the rumor is that they're introducing a new villain, but all the people online are like, what is this? Have you seen this? Oh my gosh. And the CEO, instead of doing a press release like a loser, he just tweeted. He said, the blue lights are not real. Don't worry about it. And everybody knows that he's doing it in character as the government of the world Earth in the game. And it's just genius marketing, genius. It, it really develops engagement on social media because everybody's getting on Reddit talking about it. And it's very exciting. Very good marketing. Just hats off to the developer of Helldivers. All right, so let's talk about the Apple Vision Apple Vision Pro, it is the new Apple headset. It's been out for about a month or two, so everybody's actually talking about it now because when new things come out, especially Apple products, it's tricky to get a gauge of what their actual value is. But, you know, how long is this? A month later? I feel like we should wait like six months, but okay. Let's 
it says it's good. Once again, I should have read these articles before the episode. Maybe next time we'll have like actual screenshots of me looking at the articles and I will prepare ahead of time. But for now, you're just going to have to deal with it. So I really want the Vision Pro as an Apple user. I recently converted to Apple from Android. I got the Mac Mini. Then I got the iPhone. And I'm in love with the Apple ecosystem. So I really want to get this headset because I'm trying to get a hold of a headset at the very least to facilitate my transition into being a VTuber. So the, the plan is to record selfie videos within VR chat. And as I mentioned in the beginning of this episode, I don't want to do my vlog anymore. It's a pain in my ass, to be honest. I can cover all that content in the first five minutes of this show. So there you go. All right, it says it is designed from the ground up for the Vision Pro. So you can do TikTok. Okay. Who cares about TikTok? I want to watch movies. I want to. Okay. So the Apple Vision Pro is so expensive. It is $3,500, which is more than the Valve. What is the Valve headset? Hold on. Let's look this up. Uh, the Valve VR headset. What is it called? Oh, it's called the Valve Index. As of now, April 2024, the Valve Index is still by far the best VR experience. However, I'm looking at the Big Screen Pro, which is interesting because they actually developed apps for VR where you're like in a virtual movie theater watching with your friends and they were like hey we can make our own VR headset so they did and it's this really immersed VR headset that basically molds to your face and then you have to connect it to a PC though so the reason I haven't got one yet is because I understand that I have to get a really good PC, not a Mac, but a PC to run this thing and recording my selfie vlogs is going to be a whole nother box of worms, but I digress. Anyways, according to the industry, Valve Index is the best one you can get, but I want to shell out the dough. I want the Apple one. Apparently it's really good. It's good at the tactile response where you use your fingers to like, you know, like you're going to snap almost. You put your index finger and your thumb together and you tap it and that's how you control it. And I want to talk about, hold on, we'll get to the, uh, The, uh, <clears throat> what is it called? Neuralink. We'll talk about that in the future of this episode. Don't worry. I've got a lot of articles to get through. So, Mooning Startup Interlune wants to start by digging for helium. So, this is another startup that is in the space rover industry. I'm very hype about this. I'm very bullish, as it were, for space technology. I believe that is the next frontier, the next business hype. Because for the last 10 years, it's been technology like Google and all that, which is cool. But I'm focused on rovers and the future of you know, technology, satellites, that kind of thing. And, okay, so Interlune is a startup. 
it's a private mine company to the moon's natural resources. So I've said this before, but I believe that mining asteroids and the moon and Mars and anything in space, that is also a huge industry in the future. So I've been actively looking for uh, space mining companies. One of them that I found, let me pull up my uh, fidelity here. I found one called Lunar, I think it's called Lunar Systems. Uh, hold on, I think I did my password wrong. It's called uh, Lunar Systems. I actually invested in three different space companies, Intuitive Machines, Virgin Galactic, and was that it? Oh, a uh, rocket lab, and I've done it for a few months now. The smoke has cleared, and it turns out L Lunar, which is Intuitive Machines, was actually a really good investment. They're up 120%. Rocket Lab and Virgin were terrible investments. Those are both down 13% and 63% respectively. Uh, I'm not going to sell my stocks or anything, but I still truly believe mining asteroids and such, that is the future. That's where the big industry is going to come from in the next, what, 20 years. So, you know, again, not financial, financial advice, but that's what I think. And... This is a, what is the company called? It's called Interlune. They're trying to become the first private mining company to mine the moon's natural resources. Okay, let me give you some perspective. So people say, oh, why don't you mine on Earth? What could be in some asteroids? Who cares? So they found an asteroid that is the size of New York. This was like two years ago. It is the size of New York and it is mostly nickel. And if somebody could come up with a machine that could attach to this thing, mine it. If you could mine, like they ran the numbers. If you could do 1% of this nickel asteroid, you would have a trillion dollars. Holy shit let that sink in mining anything in space is huge big business mark my words it will happen in the future i don't know what companies will do it but that's why i'm investing in these three companies rocket lab virgin galactic and intuitive machines like i said intuitive machines was the best one uh virgin they're doing okay. They're supposed to make a new spaceship, new airport structure. We'll, you know, infrastructure. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I'm a bit weary of that, but you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. So, Interlune, remember that name for the company. Let's move on. How many more? I have a lot more of these tabs. So, get ready, okay? This is a long episode, okay? So next is the dragon from SpaceX. Is this different from the Starship? Falcon 9. I think that's the older one. It looks like the... Hold on, I'm looking at the video on... SpaceX. SpaceX is really good at capturing and documenting the videos of these launches. This is so cool. It's like the future. I mean, you see rocket launches in 
movies. Okay, this looks like the older... Oh, there's an ad on YouTube. Great. All I wanted to do was watch this, but okay. All right. It's the White Rocket, which is the Falcon 9, which is not the Starship. It's not the one that goes to Mars. I really just... Trying to get this uh, launch here. All right, you're not seeing a video of this, so I'm going to skip it. I can obviously watch this in the future. Let's talk about. All right, this is the main story that I want to talk about in the show. 50 what an hour in and we're getting to the real meat and potatoes of this podcast but this is the Neuralink and it's actually working they so Neuralink was basically talking about how they want to initially help out paraplegics people that have accidents, veterans, or what have you, they can't use their brain or their arms. And the idea is that it's going to improve that functionality. But after that, they're going to try to enhance humans. We're talking cyberpunk, cybernetic implant style. So it's a big deal. This guy who's uh, wheelchair bound, he got the Neuralink. He volunteered, I presume, and apparently he can play, it's like League of Legends with his mind. Where is my, uh, I think I lost the article. There it is. Neuralink patient shows off sick mind controlled Mario Kart. So he can do Mario Kart. This is crazy, y'all. That you can literally control a computer with your mind. The applications are endless. We're talking military. We're talking consumer. And like I said, they're trying to apply this to people that have disabilities first. And then after that, I mean, imagine if you could access the internet on your eye with a screen that pulls up the whole nine This is where we're headed, y'all. This is absolutely crazy Blade Runner shit. I am so excited. Uh, I actually would love to volunteer to put the Neuralink in my brain. But, you know, I'm going to wait for a few years and see how safe or unsafe it is. These kind of things, they take experimentation. You're going to... You want to make an omelet, you're going to have to break some eggs. Um, One example of that is they had all these testing sessions on monkeys for Neuralink. And all the PETA type people were like, oh my god. Oh no, they're testing on animals, these poor monkeys. Look, the whole reason we test on animals is because it's not on a human. And, you know... You want to get mad at me for this, for saying this, but I believe humans are just a bit more important than animals. And while I feel bad for those monkeys that got tested on, yo, this is how you make a product, okay? You have to test it on something, and I sure as hell am not going to be the guinea pig. Am I right? So there's a joke that the people volunteering, it's like, yo, don't be the first volunteer, right? However, uh, I might be the second generation volunteer. What my concern is, is what happens if you like bang your head? Like if you're a football player and you have the Neuralink, what happens if you get a concussion? How, you know, how much trouble is that for real? I was looking into getting implants for my teeth because my teeth are not the best. This was about 15 years ago. 
But the doctor was like, yeah, you know, you got to be careful. You can't get hit. It might not take. And it's like, you know, you're dealing with these issues with Neuralink. The brain might reject it. I heard one of the monkeys was like going crazy and banging his head against the wall. I know the very first Neuralink human patient was like, oh my God, I'm in so much pain, so much pain, take it out. So who knows? We'll see where it goes, but I'm so hype about this cyberpunk future. All right, what else? All right, we don't need that. Some of the stuff is, oh, this is exciting. So this is more business, but apparently Krispy Kreme is, has made a deal with McDonald's. So they have partnered together to get all the revenue and Krispy Kreme donuts will now be available at McDonald's. This is crazy, very exciting business development. If I were McDonald's, I would say this is a good idea. If I were Krispy Kreme, I would say why not get the promotion? Who knows how much either party paid, but this is, in my opinion, a genius business move. It makes me want to go to McDonald's, even though I don't even like Krispy Kreme donuts, but I've heard of the brand. You know, McDonald's with Krispy Kreme. This is very epic. All right, let's move on. We got a lot to get through. How many more? We have so many. Oh, we're not that far. All right, we did Krispy Kreme. All right. Uh, Netflix Blockbuster, let's skip that. I don't care. What is this? Something about Nashville, I don't care. Okay, so let's talk about AI. Let's talk about OpenAI Sora, which is a video AI. And a lot of the strike with the Actors Guild, the Screen Actors Guild, and the... Wasn't it... It was writers, but also actors. There's been a lot of strikes. In the last three months or six months, they definitely had some kind of ceasefire negotiation. But I know that the actors and writers are not satisfied. Basically, they're worried about their job being taken away by AI. And I think they're right. This AI has the potential to take over. However, I've experienced AI and I think if you're anything worth your salt as a filmmaker, producer, writer, AI is a tool. If that AI can beat you, you're not good enough. That's what I say. So they're right to worry about their jobs. However, they shouldn't worry. They should step up their game I believe that AI will overtake us, but not yet. We got to make as much money as we can before that. But, you know, I digress. All right, I have a Reddit thing. Oh, it's everything, everywhere, all at once. So, we actually did a commentary with this for our Netflix podcast. What's new to Netflix Instant? That is in the description. Check it out. Um, I wanted to hate it going into it, but after doing it, I realized, oh no, this is pretty, it's pretty chill. All right, let's close that. I've lost track. There's so many tabs. All right, here's another one about Jeff Bezos and Blue Origin, which is his uh, space company. He wants to harvest stuff from the moon. The truth is, there's untapped resources on the moon, on Mars, 
any country that does not get involved, you're not going to make it, okay? That's just how it is. All right, they're looking for helium-3, which is apparently available on the moon. So China has a moon base. Let that sink in. We don't have one yet. China is literally building one. Basically, I support this. We should mine the moon, take all that crap, whatever the resources is, let's take it. What is this, an article about buildings? I swear, I save articles and I say, oh, that'll be good for the podcast. And then I watch it and I'm like, oh, this is, what is this? More hell divers. Let's skip that. Uh, something about Samsung AI. Who cares? Oh, cool. So if you're in the army and you have some kind of injury or I know throat cancer with cigarette smokers is a thing. A lot of times their voice goes out and they have to get that thing. You know, like in South Park where you hold it to your throat and then you talk and it like makes the noise i knew a guy at a bar that used to have that they have a new ai thing that is basically like batman beyond and you put it on your throat it looks like a little patch we're talking like the size of a large stamp and this is very cool it helps you it uses ai and an app on your phone obviously But you basically talk and it'll talk for you. And this is so crazy, y'all. When I was a kid, when you had mental or physical issues, you basically didn't have a lot of options. And now there are all the options in the world. It's absolutely crazy. Like when you lose a leg or an arm, when I was a kid, you had a hook or a rubber hand or like a wooden hand. That was it. And now you can get these AI powered smartphone connected, fully dexterous arms with ten with five fingers that work. It's absolutely crazy to be alive now. You're so lucky, especially if you're in like, you know, America or Europe, like just the, the technology, the healthcare available to you is just off the charts. It's insane. The people in the medieval times, they would look at us and think, oh, you're living like a king. This is crazy, right? All right, let's move on. I'm uh, definitely ranting. Voice AI. All right, so it says scientists hacked the genome of fungi to create meat. This has to do with the impossible meat. They basically figured out a way. Now, impossible meat is not real meat. It is food that is made to mimic the look and taste of meat. However, this is, they actually started growing meat in a lab. And a lot of people, they get so upset about this. And am I the only one who's not? Like, as long as it isn't, hurting you like if it's safe I have no moral problems with eating lab grown meat like I've had hot dogs before right if it's better than a hot dog I'm sold who cares if it's grown in a lab that also reminds me of uh, diamonds diamonds used to be such a big deal because you know the blood diamonds and all that Now, apparently, you could just buy one from a lab, which makes it less special. I mean, I support it. I think it's cool. I personally don't care. Give me a lab-grown diamond. Who cares? But it's interesting that they found a way to make meat grow in the same way. It looks gross, though. It's like, they call it a mold patty. 
See, the word mold makes me not want to try it, but, you know. It reminds me also of, like, the 3D, uh, the fabricator from Star Trek. If you don't watch Star Trek, it's basically this machine that would 3D print any food or drinks you ever wanted. Or any other objects, for that matter. And it's part of the reason why they're, you know... They're uh, almost like socialist uh, system in Star Trek works because they can produce anything without labor. Very interesting. Uh, for some reason, I saved an article about the new Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I kind of want to get into it just because it looks cool. That's about it. All right, we got a Breath of the Wild sequel that's supposed to be way bigger. What is it called, though? It's called Outcast, A New Beginning. It looks cool. Let's pull up a video. Hold on. Once again, in the future, you'll be able to see what I'm looking at. Outcast. New Beginning. Gameplay. Here's a trailer. There, can you hear it? I don't want to play it too much. It looks cool. It looks uh crazy. I can see why they say it's inspired by uh Zelda game. It looks like a next gen version of that where you can fly around uh it actually looks really cool. It's got 180,000 three weeks ago on views on YouTube. It's not too good. I don't think this is another Helldivers, but if it's one player, I'm down. It's got it's giving me just cause vibes. Alright, I don't want to mess up the algorithm by playing that music, so let's move on. Oh my gosh, I made too many articles. I might just like not do them. What is our time? An hour? Jeez. Maybe I should just leave it at this. Hold on, let's let's go through. We have SpaceX. All right, so Voyager is a satellite we sent out from, like, the 80s. There's a whole Star Trek sh movie about it, how the satellite becomes infected with a computer virus, and it becomes sentient. Basically, a NASA engineer poked it, and it gave it a memory dump. You know what? I've just decided this is pointless. I don't care about that. Apparently I have something. I have way too many articles this time. Uh, headaches in astronauts in space. Apparently astronauts get headaches when they moonwalk. Or is it when they're on the spaceship itself? So it says the headache occurred during the early period, like a migraine. While those experienced later in the travel, so late they got one of the a headache in the beginning and a headache at the end. It's probably got to do with blood flow and gravity because we know that gravity actually messes up your bone growth. Like if you go live in Earth, you live in space too long, it messes up your bones. The sci-fi show The Expanse actually touches on this. There's this whole. A uh, group of people called the asteroid uh, colonists and they all have like weak bones because they're from space basically it's very interesting this is a whole article just about the uh, geez his migraines uh, throbbing lasting four to seven hours Accompanied by nausea, vomiting, hypersensitivity, hypersensitivity to light. 
So they did, it was 24 people, it's like a survey study, 23 men, one woman, average age of 47, wow, these astronauts are kind of old. Here you go. Uh, various documented effects of space travel include bone and muscle atrophy, changes in the brain, cardiovascular systems and immune systems, issues with balance. Wow. Uh, cancer risks because you actually get a lot of radiation in space. We have the ozone layer that actually protects us from that, from the sun. Wow, this is cool. So we don't know the effects of long duration space travel. We will see. That's what the whole study is about. All right, we'll skip the seas creature. All right, they're still working with that sample from Mars. They opened it, it took them a while. I really want to know what the results are. It looks like they're not they're not even talking about it. This is an article about some other BS. All right. So we talked about AI. All these companies are making their own AI. Elon Musk is starting his AI called Grok at like Chat GPT, right? But he made it open source, which is very cool. Open source is where you don't have a patent. You don't keep your formula secret. You share it to the public for them to use. And there's very strict, stringent copyright laws when it comes to this kind of thing, uh, open source. But I think if anybody can pull it off, it's Elon Musk. So we'll see how that goes. I've learned about Grok a little bit. Apparently it is... Uh, super uh, snarky and sarcastic. So, you know, very exciting. All right, more SpaceX articles. Boring asteroid. I really need to curate these before I do the article, but whatever. It is what it is. You want to hang out with the Jim Lettuce Podcast. This is it, okay? All right, there's a new... All right, this is more entertainment style. Everybody wants to know who the next James Bond is. Daniel Craig famously retired like two years ago. And who's it going to be? Aaron Taylor Johnson is one of the top five. Uh, I think he's got the looks. I don't know if he has the charisma. I almost want to look. Let's see uh, what actors are. Hold on. I'm stuck on my fidelity page. What actors are up for Bond? All right, this is a Google search. Idris Alba. I think Idris Alba is a good choice. Famously, the production company behind the James Bond movies came out like a year or two ago and said, we're not going to do Idris Alba. He's too urban. I think he's got an audience. He's cool. He's British. He's smooth. He could do it. However, I think he's a bit older. So if you're thinking in terms of franchises, you kind of want to get somebody who could do it for like four movies, right? Uh, let's see. Who is this Harry Golding? Who Who is Harry Golding? Uh, he was in a Guy Ritchie movie. <clears throat> I think he's okay. Tom Hardy is on the list. Look, I love Tom Hardy, but he's a bit too gritty. Especially if we're going to have an older Bond who's more smooth, like old school Bond. I love Tom Hardy. I don't think he would fit, to be honest. If you're going to put Tom Hardy as a spy. First of all, he did a spy movie with uh, 
Chris Pine, the Star Trek uh, guy. That was actually really good. I think, if anything, make Tom Hardy do Jason Bourne. He would make a really good Jason Bourne. Am I right? Who else we got? We got Henry Cavill. I think if you want the safe bet, you want to make money, you want to make two or three movies, Henry Cavill is your guy. If I was in charge and I had to pull the trigger at this moment, I would pick Henry Cavill for sure. There's interviews where he talks about how he wanted to be James Bond. He definitely auditioned for the Daniel Craig one. You know, we'll see. What else? We got Richard Madden, which I think is the... Um, is that the Rob Stark guy from... Uh, yeah, yeah, he played Rob Stark in Game of Thrones. Very exciting. Why is it playing a YouTube video? It's him on uh, Jimmy Kimmel. I do not want to give Jimmy Kimmel views. Jimmy Kimmel used to be cool, but he sucks now. So Aaron Taylor Johnson, maybe Henry Cavill. We'll see. I think Aaron Taylor Johnson, in terms of investors, is a good pick because he's so young. He could do like six of these. However, I think if you're trying to please the fans, you want to make a good James Bond who's true to the character, I believe Henry Cavill would be the superior choice. If that is your uh, ranking. But, you know, we'll see. What else? Okay, this is another big one. Nikon acquired Red. So if you don't know what Red is, Red was the first big company to have digital 4K video cameras. Sony was doing it a little bit. With George Lucas and the new, uh, well, I say new, the Star Trek prequels in the early 2000s. They were trailblazing. Since then, the, remember Oakley's, the glasses? So, the guy who made Oakley's was like, let's make cameras, why not? And I know that George Lucas had influence in this whole situation. There's a really good documentary directed and narrated by Keanu Reeves called Side by Side that talks about film versus digital and in it George Lucas shows up and talks about how they started making digital cameras like he's literally responsible for creating 4k digital cinema the way we have it now like that was a lot of it was literally his idea when they were making the Star Wars prequels, so it's kind of a uh, unique, right? But Nikon bought Red. Nikon is famous for having cameras, but also lenses. And I think they were like, "What are we doing? We need to acquire Red." And they bought Red. So I don't know if that means Red is gonna suck now, like how Dell bought Alienware computers and basically. Alienware sucked after that. So maybe Nikon Nikon will ruin Red. Maybe not. Maybe Nikon really needs Red hardware. I think that is the case. Uh, what else? Okay, Alien Romulus. Can we talk about this for a minute? I'm so excited about Alien Romulus. This is a the new Alien sequel... It is more of a throwback to the 80s Ridley, uh, like Sigourney Weaver type, you know, very industrial, very hazy. Who, okay, let's look it up. IMDb Alien Romulus 2024. I want to see who's directing it. Who is the director the main actor looks hot i like her fede alvarez i think this is the guy who did the evil dead remake i think he looks very eccentric 
Uh, he did the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Don't Breathe. Is that it? Evil Dead. Yeah, he did the Evil Dead. Oh, he did the screenplay. Oh. Wait, where's the uh, director? I guess he's mostly a writer. But he's directing this, so... We'll see. I'm hype. Uh, I gotta find a lady to go see it because it looks more like a scary movie. And I believe the best way to watch a horror movie or a scary movie is if you have a nice girl to go with. A nice date, if you will. So we'll see. Uh, more Neuralink. Oh, he basically played chess. Let's see. What else? Uh, Carcanal, Fossil, I don't care. So China is launching a satellite support for future moon missions. Listen, we really got to beat these other countries going to the moon and space because love it or hate it, somebody is going to colonize space. And if America doesn't do it, some other country will and we will not benefit from that. It's going to be really bad. There's too many. Too many articles. A lot of Neuralink. Oh my gosh. So many. Let's skip a few of these. There's too many. What is this? A dra no. See, that's more SpaceX. Oh, this is cool. They put a pig kidney inside a man and it worked. So people always think about monkeys and chimpanzees, how they look like us. They're actually not that close to us DNA wise. However, pigs are apparently. And I've heard about this for like 10 years, but they're actually doing it. So this guy got a kid, a pig, sorry. A pig kidney, 62-year-old, he got a kidney from a pig and they put it in his body and it, it fucking worked. Apparently he's fine. They're still doing tests. He could keel over and die next month, but it's crazy how it reminds me of when I was talking about the arm thing earlier when I was a kid. Like you lost your arm, you got a hook. Or you got a wooden hand. That was it. And now with organs, it's not like that either. Before you lose a kidney, you lose, you know, you your shit out of luck. Now they can literally grow one out of a pig. This is crazy. This is so amazing. I know they did some kind of uh, artificial heart a few years ago. Between that and pig livers, like this, pig kidneys, this is crazy. You can literally do anything you want now. It's, it's very exciting. Uh, I have some article about Dragon's Dogma 2. Apparently, it's uh, not that cool on console. Oh, here we go. This is more important. Bloodborne fans on March 24th. Oh, well, this is out of date. So there's a big rumor that there's going to be some kind of Bloodborne remake or remaster. Uh, I hope so. I want to see that. I'm seeing Alien Covenant videos. So I went on this like deep rabbit hole dive the other night. I was thinking about this one scene in Alien... Or sorry, in Prometheus... And I thought I would look it up. And then I went into this rabbit hole of all these articles and forums and groups talking about the lore of Prometheus and Alien and how they mix together. And I think it was a big mistake not doing Prometheus 2 or whatever. They just switched to Alien Covenant, which was okay. I like the lead. I like Danny McBride. I like the Alien IP, but... Man, Prometheus 
the fans on YouTube, like, there's your potential franchise. That could have been it. But, you know, anyways, they didn't do it. Uh, I want to at least touch on Diddy. Uh, apparently, he's a pervert. We will follow that case, kind of like the Young Thug case. Young Thug is still in prison as far as I know. Uh, all right, Bethesda teased Elder Scrolls. All right, let's be real. We're not going to see a working prototype of this game for like five years. Mark my words. If I'm wrong, prove me wrong. But they said they have a playable version of it, which sounds like bullshit. I mean, after the Starfield flop, I mean, Bethesda, what are you doing? Get it together. Everybody loves you, but we don't care anymore. And I think Starfield, I said this before Starfield came out. If you don't blow us away with Starfield, nobody will care about Elder Scrolls 6. And I was right. Does anybody care about this? I mean, they've been working on Elder Scrolls 6 hardcore since launch of Starfield, which was what, like last year? So, yeah, five years from now, we'll see an actual legit version of Elder Scrolls 6. But I'm skeptical. I'm butthurt that Starfield sucked that much. Man, this game better blow us away. I think it's going to suck, though. That's my prediction. It's going to suck. All right, what else? Uh, okay, AI is giving nuclear power a big lift. I think we should not use AI to control nuclear power plants. That's some Skynet shit, am I right? Because the idea is that it's not necessarily going to be Terminator. It's going to be some kind of logic-based computer like in Space Odyssey 2001 where the computer's like, Dave, I can't do that. Where a computer will go, oh, the biggest problem with our production is humans, so let's get rid of the humans. And it's like, that's how AI could destroy us. So, uh, we'll see. What else? I got a thing about the PS4 Pro. It's supposed to be cool. We already talked about this. Let's skip that. Uh, MacBook Air, who cares? The future of NPCs. So, basically, they're going to use AI, chat GPT for like NPCs in video games. I actually think this is a good idea cuz AAA games they take like 7 hour 7 years to come out. I was just complaining about Elder Scrolls 6 like if they could utilize AI to make it more efficient, they could shave off a couple of years on the process instead of taking 7 years for a AAA top of the notch game, they could take maybe 5 you know, I support this. You know? Alright, this is just random, but Gmail apparently started 20 years ago, and it's like, what? Gmail is 20 years old? Are you serious? That's crazy. Get out of here. I like Gmail, and it's cool, but 20 years? That's crazy. That's just crazy. Uh, that one's boring. Let's skip that. I think we're pretty much done. Oh, here, one more. Okay, so Paramount has been on the chopping block for a while. They have their own streaming service, the Yellowstone uh, Sheridan-verse, unquote, is involved in this. And apparently, a company called Apollo Global... Offered $27 billion for all of Paramount, but it was rejected. So, like I said, Paramount, uh, I think Paramount and Max, the rumor in my prediction is that they're going to merge. And they're either going to get bought out or they're going to... It's not working. Apparently, 
Apple, not even Apple TV, Disney Plus and Netflix are the only streaming services that are actually making money. So we'll see where it goes. We'll see if Paramount gets bought by Netflix or something. The Apollo offered eleven billion for Paramount by itself. Sherry Redstone is Paramount's controlling shareholder. Uh, see, remember, Paramount has theme parks, not just streaming service. They have a movie studio. They have theme parks. That's crazy. And apparently this company, Skydance Media, is merging. We're going to see a big shakeup in the streaming world. Like I said, Netflix is one of the only ones besides... Like, Netflix is the juggernaut. People talk shit about Netflix, but they are still making money. Uh, Companies like Max are putting their original programming on Netflix as a license deal. This is crazy. Very big deal. I want to keep following this closely. If you want to, you know, learn about this stuff as it happens, stick around. So what is our time? 1.40? Wow, this is a long one. Anyways... Uh, I think you're covered all the topics. If you want to support us, please watch our new short film, Blazer Gibson, on TemporarySpaceStudios.com. Link is in the description. You can also buy merchandise, LettuceWearClothing.com. There's all these links. Check out the Cosmo Bong. It is a comic my buddies made. They're actually producers of the Blazer Gibson movie. And uh, check out the What's New to Netflix podcast. That's what me and Miles have been doing for like eight years now. It's crazy. Anyways, you know, click all the stuff. And if you're on Apple Podcast, I figured out that the link to our merch will be in the episode description link. It's called like the website episode website link or something. If you go to the actual podcast, it'll just link you to Acast, which is the host of our podcast. But if you click on the episode link, that will take you to LettuceWearClothing.com. You can buy a shirt, support us, all that jazz. Anyways, thank you for listening. Next time, I plan to do this before May. Because see, this is the March episode and we're already in April, so... I don't plan on doing this next time. Either way, thank you for watching or listening. I'm Jim Lettuce. Drive safe and shit.